Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be solving the lead code question Hamming distance. Uh, so as usual, first we're going to go over the logic behind the question and then we're going to write Python code to solve it. Okay, so the Hamming distance between two integers is a number of positions at which the corresponding bits are different. Given two integers x and y, calculate the Hamming distance. Let's first try to understand what a Hamming, what the Hamming distance actually is. So I'm just going to use the same numbers. So x equals one, and then y equals four. So x in binary is zero 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 one, and four in binary is zero one zero zero. Right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to perform something called a XOR operation. So if you don't know what that is, what that means is Every time you have the two of the same thing, so if you have zero and zero or one and one, you're gonna give back, you're gonna, uh, the result is gonna have a zero. But if you have two different uh, elements, like a one and a zero or a zero and a one, then you're gonna return back a one. Okay, so let's just perform this on these two. So over here, one and zero, you're gonna get one because they're different. These two are the same, so zero. These two are different, so one. These two are different, uh, sorry, the same, so zero. So now we need to look at how many ones do we have. So we have two ones, right? And our answer is going to be two. So that means that the Hamming distance is two. And there's one more operation, operation that we should understand in order to do this. So uh, that's the AND operation. So what that does, that actually favors one, sorry, it favors zero. So you're only gonna return a one when both the elements are a one, or both the bits are a one. And in every other case, you're gonna return a zero. So let's say you have zero and zero, you're gonna return zero. If you have zero and one, or one and zero, in both the cases, you're gonna return a zero. And the only case you return a one is when you have one and one, that's when you return a one. And before we can solve the question, there's one more concept we need to understand. Let's say we have the number n. So this n can be anything, right? And it has this, uh, these bits. So one, one, zero, one, zero, zero. Now, whatever it is, n minus one, is gonna flip the least significant one bit into a zero. So what that means is the least significant one. So the least significant one for n is this. This is the least significant one. And this is gonna get flipped to a zero in n minus one. So this is gonna stay the same, this is gonna stay the same, this is also gonna stay the same, but over here, this is gonna get flipped to zero and this is gonna become one and one. So now when we apply the and, oper and bitwise operator uh, on these two, what we're gonna get is we're gonna get a result of zero, 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 uh, zero, and then one and one. So as you can see, the least significant one uh, went away. So uh, if you keep repeating this process, so we're gonna make this n, and we're gonna find its n minus one and then uh, apply the and operator on both of them. So when you keep doing that process, you're gonna reach a point where you're gonna get the bits zero, 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 zero. So you're only gonna get zeros. And that is equivalent to one, to zero, sorry. So that's when we know that we're done uh, iterating, we're done finding all the ones and we can uh, stop iterating through our uh, loop. Let's now implement our solution on code. So our first step is going to be to find the XOR value. So to do that, uh, the operator is to use um, this. So X, uh, X or Y. So that's what, so we're going to get the XOR value and we're going to set a count. So what is the, so the count is basically going to count how many ones we have in the XOR value. So how are we going to do that? First, we're going to put it inside of a while loop and we're going to keep going until we reach all zeros. So while the XOR value is not equal to zero, um, and what we're going to do first is we're going to increase the count by one. And the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to change the value of the XOR. So the XOR value 
is going to be like we saw earlier. We're going to apply the AND bitwise operator on AND, N and N minus 1. So in this case, the N is the XOR value. And we're going to apply that, uh, apply the, the AND bitwise operator on the value of XOR value minus 1. And then uh, we're going to, so the, each time we do this, we're gonna d uh, we're gonna have lesser amounts of ones, and those ones are gonna be accounted by increasing the count by one. Because remember that every time we perform this, we're removing the least significant one. And after we exit out of the while loop, we're gonna return the count. And uh, an easier way to write this is we could just call and over here, and get rid of this, so our code just looks cleaner. So if we run this, our answer should be accepted. Okay, submit. Okay, so our answer was accepted. And finally, do let me know if you have a better solution or if you have any questions regarding this and I'll be happy to help. And finally, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. Thank you.